Well, hi again. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. Thank you for clicking the link and joining us. You might recall in the last Chess Base Workshop that I was uh, wearing the hair shirt and flagellating myself over a game that I had played back in 1991 in which I had played a bizarre variation of the French defense. By bizarre, I mean the fact that neither my opponent nor I had any idea what we were doing. Uh, we played the opening like a couple of idiots, and we wound up in a very strange position. One of the things I went back and looked at, though, was uh, I was looking at um, the way the game should have gone, and last week we looked at piece probability graphic display. Basically, I wondered where White's light square bishop should end up, and we saw how to do that last week. One of the things I brought up was that you could kind of find that information yourself if you want to put a whole lot more work into it by creating an opening tree of the games. What I didn't tell you was how to do that. There's a shortcut. You can create opening trees on the fly in chess base without going through all the rigmarole of making a tree file on your hard drive, dragging and dropping games into it, looking at the games, and then maybe deleting that tree as soon as you're done because it's not something you need hanging around and cluttering up your hard drive. Instead of going through all those steps, you can actually make a tree on the fly, just a temporary tree that only lasts as long as you're in chess base. As soon as you close the program, that tree goes away. Let me show you how you do that. This is the position we were looking at. You might recall it was a French defense, e4, e6, etc. And here's where my opponent left book, did something weird, but I decided to stick with the book moves try to see how this variation should have been played and this is where we stop uh, Queen b6 at this point what happens next I mean you've got uh, you know the d pawn is, is attacked twice etc etc well here's how you do it you start out the same as last week when we went to do piece probability displays to create a tree on the fly a temporary tree you start out the same way first you have to find the games so the way you do this is go to your database desktop. Right click on the database that you wish to search. Mega Database 2011 in this case for me. Right click on it. You get a pop up menu. Go to search. And when it comes up, go to position and select copy board. And that brings the last position that you were looking at over so you, you don't have to put all those pieces on those squares yourself. It's done for you. As we saw before, don't mess with first and last uh, or length because we're looking at an opening position here. So just leave the defaults alone. Just click OK and let it rip. You may recall from last week we had 47 games when it was done. Here we've hit 100% down in the lower right corner. Single left click on the first game in the list or any game in the list it doesn't matter I just do the first game because I'm kind of orderly that way single right click to get a pop-up menu go to edit and go to select all that selects all 47 of the games that we just found then and then along came Jones you right click and here is the command selection to book I know a lot of people that have seen this a hundred times and have no idea what it does what it does is going to take these 47 games and create an opening book out of them really cool just left click on it and let the magic happen I need to do something here because I had set this up differently here we go um, you can change the font, by the way. Your font probably won't be this big, but I'm half blind, so I went for a larger font. Um, what we have here is basically what happens next. After six bishop, I'm sorry, queen b6, the seventh moves for white are as follows. In these 47 games, now understand that 47 games is not a huge statistical sampling. It's like when they say four out of five dentists prefer Freem toothpaste. They're talking to more than five guys. They're just boiling those numbers down into something a little more easily understandable. Same kind of thing here. The, as most statisticians will tell you, you know, the, the bigger a sampling you get, the more reliable the results. So take these results with a little bit of salt because there are only 47 games. It's not 
in the thousands, not in the hundreds. It's 47. But we notice some stuff right away, which is after 47 games, the percentage is the score given from the point of view of white. Now you can change this, but the default, as you'll see under properties, is result from the white side. I tend to leave it alone because I've done this for so long, that's what I'm used to seeing. Basically, the higher the number here, the closer it is to 100%, the better it is for white. The closer that number is to 0%, the better it is for black. What we notice in these 47 games is that me, as the white player, I'm already in a little tiny bit of trouble. It's a little bit better for black than it is for me as white. That's with all 47 games. 45.7%. Note that if I play knight e2 here, it's much worse for me than if I play knight f3. Notice that the name of the tree is temp with a number after it. Basically what's happened is on, th this tree is on your hard drive, but it's only there temporarily. It's put into a temporary folder. That's the name it has, but as soon as you exit chess base, that, all those files will be deleted. They're just going to vaporize. So it's a temporary tree. It's a way to look at variations on the fly without having to drag and drop a bunch of games and go through a bunch of extra steps. It's very fast and very cool. Notice after Knight F3 then, of course we have a whole bunch of black replies and some of them are good for black, two of them are really good for white. But typically if black knows what he's doing, statistically he's going to do well in this variation. Backing up to where we were by the way, notice that uh, we have the average rating of the white players who played Knight F3 is 2029. 20, the performance rating, basically the better you do in a variation, you know, the better the players do, the higher the performance rating, the worse they do, the lower. Notice that the performance rating goes down from their average rating. With uh, only two games where seven Knight E2 was played, we don't have any ratings in there. None of the players were rated that played that move. I want to show you something that I took away at the beginning of this. We'll, we'll go back and add it again. Go to properties. If you haven't done this, this is something you should do. Make sure statistics is checked whenever you have an opening tree that you're using. I'll show you why. When you click OK, you get another display down here at the bottom and it gives you a whole bunch more information. Notice that Knight F3 was played in 45 games with a 46.7 percent success rating from white standpoint, meaning it's a little bit better for black. Down here you get a graphic display that actually shows it to you and it just leaps off the screen at you. Black wins are the red bar, white wins are the green bar, the gray bar draws. Notice here white wins 15 games, black wins 18 games with 12 draws. So you can see right there that black is doing a little bit better in this variation than white is. However, that is only taking into account the 45 games in which Knight F3 was played. Because notice if we click on Knight E2, this display down here changes. It's only those two games. There's one black win and one draw, which means a 25% success rate from White's standpoint. Um, wins are counted as 100, losses are counted as 0 draws are counted as 50. So with the two games you've got a 50 and a 0, add them together you got 50, divided by 2 you get 25. That's where that 25 percent comes from. It's all a math thing. So you can see graphically down here how poorly white does with knight e2, but with knight f3 we have a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of numbers here and the big thing is the colored bars that show you, just jumps right off the screen at you, that shows you that black is doing better. But if you want specific numbers, here you go. Black wins 40% of the games, white wins 33% of the games, 27% of draws, and when you play with those numbers and do the division, you come up with 46.7. Go to the next move for black, and here you have, again, knight h6 does extremely well for black, knight on g to e7, does extremely well, well, somewhat better for white. I won't call it extremely. A little bit better for white. Bunch of draws with bishop d7, but black does a little bit better in the games that have a specific result rather than a draw. Games in which one player is won, black does a little bit better. And then you're starting in in games where there's only three games or one game. You got to kind of take that with a pillar of salt, especially this one. H6 was played one time and the uh, rating of the player who played it was 1271. So 
take that with a, you know, don't think that's a bust. Uh, take that with a, a big grain of salt. However, you can search for this position after age six and look at that game and possibly see, uh, you know, see what happened there. But notice that, that the player of that move was rated 1271 and he was playing a white player that was rated 1895 and it was a white win. So no huge surprise there. What I want to show you, though, is what I've shown you here, how you can do a tree on the fly without having to create one on the hard drive and drag games into it. Just highlight a bunch of games and bang them into a tree, and that you can get a graphic statistical display down here at the bottom. I'll go over it one more time just to show you once again how it's done. After you've done your search, single click on one of the games and then right click, go to edit and select all then right click on any of those games that's highlighted and pick selection to book that means all the selected games will be merged into a temporary opening tree bing doesn't take long the default I believe is to show you this display down here at the bottom but if you don't get that in your tree when you create a temporary tree all you have to do is right click anywhere in this big open area where there's no writing go to properties and make sure that statistics is checked. If it's not checked, of course, you won't have that down here at the bottom. So be sure to go to properties and check statistics. Click OK. And now you have this great display down here at the bottom. Very graphic. Gives you a ton of extra information. And I suggest using this to get even more out of your opening trees. Well, that's it. Till next week, for Chess Base Workshop, I'm Steve Lopez. Till we get together again, please have fun.